Today is February 24th, 2020. 2020. It's been about two months since my last video. I'm trying to get better, as I said, trying to make uh, more videos more often. Um, I guess what I wanted to do tonight is uh, talk about a little bit about myself and where my perspective comes from, why, why I come and talk about what I talk about from the angle that I talk about it from. Uh, why my diet is a certain way it's had to change and modify and what I call the warrior diet because it, it pretty much takes a warrior to um, to do it but it will help organize your body so if in a two month span you try to uh, eat the way I'm going to be presenting how I eat you'll be able to give your body a chance to reset reorganize regroup redo rethink and restart and then if you like it, you can keep it uh, going, make it a lifestyle, or you can just try it whenever you need it, you know, like a bicycle. You try, you fail, you get up, get it back on, and, and you keep doing it until you can get it. Because I'll tell you, 80% um, is is very important what goes in the body. Whatever goes in the body comes and expresses on the exterior. And, uh, you know, we're all out there bicycling and working out and not paying too much attention to what's going in or or the consequences of that little bit of highly toxic substances that's mixed in our food that just doesn't allow our body to, to work in the proper ways that it's supposed to. And so I'm going to be coming out with something called the, the Warrior Diet, and it will be for two months. It will be for, like I said, people to try it and um, see if it helps them, see if it helps them, especially if they got any type of chronic illness or or uh, anything that keeps that they need their immune system to be up high all the time. And with what has happened to me with this uh, new microwave radiation that's going on in our atmosphere and the heavy metals that are combined uh, in our atmosphere from aerosol spraying in, in the atmosphere um, of these metallics, it's really affected my body. But uh, through a lot of trial and error, through a lot of work, through... Through a lot of uh, soul searching, a lot of Tony Pateresco, that's for sure. Mr. Pateresco, I want to thank a big shout out to him. For anybody who has any type of uh, chronic illness, I think you should look up into Tony Pantayaresco. I'll put it in the credits on the bottom. He gives a lot of explanation for a lot of this um, biotech that's in these metallic particles that I pulled out of my skin. And so it's a long story. I, I want to get back to the focus of how we can regroup, reorganize, redo the body. I just want to talk about my arms and my body has redefined and reshaped with very little effort. I used to be a long time ago, over 14 years ago, a professional fighter. And in that, I trained very hard and I could never get the kind of body I have right now with minimal workout. I got minimal workout, maximum results because of how I don't put in my body what breaks it down. And since I've been able to identify what those things are to a very, very specific degree, um, I kind of like Bruce Lee, the food, the food religions. I took the best out of each one and I put them together to maximize uh, the immune system and make sure that we're never coming down. So whatever is in our atmosphere, whatever's in our environment doesn't get an opportunity to break down, break down the body. Um, I'll go into that on, on other videos. How... There's a lot of proof and evidence where if the body is completely full of its amino acids, its minerals, its vitamins, it's completely functional and can be in any environment and the body won't absorb anything toxic in, in the atmosphere. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to get into that right now. <clears throat> I just definitely want to um, turn this back a little bit. That was a little bit about uh, where I'm going to be going with uh, showing people how I eat, posting it, showing how I cook it. The reason why it's important that I make this video first before I start showing people how to do that is because it's going to look crazy. It's going to look absolutely nuts why I'm eating the way I'm eating or what I'm doing. It's not that it's gross. It's just that it's untypical uh, in our everyday kitchens. I've been cooking since I was 13, so cooking for me is it's a piece of cake. It's a natural science to me. That's why I can make formulas really well and make my own proteins. I've, uh, from Tony Peresco, I've learned how to make my own um, vitamins and minerals, which I uh, take under the tongue. And I'm going to tell you, I haven't been taking them for the past uh, three weeks. I've been out of them. And 
I can say that I don't have the same energy level, the same oomph, the same strength, the same mental drive, uh, the same sleep. I don't get my, my sleep is uh, not as good as it used to be from not having um, the minerals that I've been taking for over the past two years. The only reason I don't these things happen where I'm not taking something or something's missing from my my routine is because my conditions um, that my situation is what causes that I'll be in a situation which causes that to happen but from that I learn a lot of before and after my own before and after almost like a before after and then an after that so I get to actually see what being in a unhealthy to healthy to going back to pushing pushing some of my um, usual supplements from the new stuff that I've been making <clears throat> new meaning two years new uh, it really shows me what a serious difference and impact they make. And I'm going to also be showing people how to do that, how to make your own supplements, how to make your own protein uh, so that it's easy to do, it's easy to understand, easy to take uh, for your whole family because I have kids and so I can't just be taking care of my body. I have to be taking care of my kids' bodies too. And uh, there's a little science to that. It's not, it's not a very uh, big deal. But obviously a bigger body needs more of certain things and smaller bodies need a little less. But as long as you're just getting it in those micro, you know, it's about the micros. It's not about making everything huge and massive. It's just about getting just enough of what the body needs so it can get to work and function right in all of its operations. Mental, psychological, emotional, physical, all of those things um, are one unit. And um, we've been taught that they're all separate when, it, when it's actually all just one. Uh, let's see, kind of. I don't want to say I'm going to ramble, but since I don't, I'm not good at making these videos. I don't know how to organize what I need to say because I want to say a whole lot of things. Um, so if you just bear with me, give me a second. Let me figure out how how what I, what I'm how I'm going to put this out there. So I want to show people how to make their own vitamins, their own supplements, their own proteins, how to cook quick, like within 30 minutes and get a very highly nutritious, uh, impacting food source where well, we get the maximum result. I'm telling you, maximum result is fucking ridiculous. It's not that I'm the best body or I think I have the greatest body. It's just my body's never been better and I'm 46 years old. I'm going to be 47 this year. So, you know, like I said, I couldn't even get this when I was 20, when I was following the mainstream, doing everything that I was supposed to be doing. And now that I'm doing everything the opposite, it's, uh, I'm getting incredible, incredible results. And I'm constantly detoxing. Um, that's another big part. The detoxing, the way Tony Pateresco showed you how to clean out the cells and maximize it with, with uh, maximum nutritional benefit. And at the same time, it helps to release the, the toxins from the body where he teaches how to pull out the metals from the body. We can go into what kind of metals they are. I don't want to. I want to just keep it, just get it out the body. Just get the stuff out the body that's in our environment and it's in our atmosphere and we're not paying any attention to it. The only reason I've paid attention to it is because it started coming out of my fucking face. Swoop. Try not to say no uh, strong words. Where it started coming out of my face. <clears throat> so it got my attention and I had to get to work. I had to start figuring out what was going on and how to find out uh, solutions or uh, remedies. Uh, to help myself and um so i took tony pacheresco's information and i had to compact it and make it for for my uh my way of life you know for my routines because i got little kids and and we just got a different it's just a different system when you're a single person it's one thing and when you have children and a whole family you got to be looking out for you got to modify things your timing's even different and how you f and how you share food is different and nobody wants to be on your food plan you know because they want to eat whatever they want to eat but at the same time you know you got to take care of your 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 family <clears throat> so it makes it kind of tough but i've been there done that and i can um share what i've done uh for myself and my kids so that uh you can copy it if you want, you know, take what you, what you want and leave what you don't. Um, but this, me talking right now about where I get my perspective and why it's so god dang mandatory for me as far as I'm so sharp on it, meaning I'm very focused, um, is if you don't hear what I have to say in this video about why I have a fire, you know, a bit under my ass to get things done. 
to make strong bodies, to keep strong minds, to keep strong will, you know, to keep that strong emotion and in, in balanced. That strong emotion just means that we have a sense of ourselves and we know how to project it and we know how to maintain a balance within our environment no matter how heavy shit might get. Sorry, I can't help, but every once in a while a word might come out. <laughs> Do you think it'd be like a George Carlin? So if you can hear George Carlin, you, you can handle me. If not, this is not this is not good lane of information for you. Um how shall we say? Let me go back. So before I start presenting these things, like I said, uh how I'm doing all these things and and uh so that you can benefit from them if you choose to, is the things that I've seen in my life since I was a kid has led me to the awareness it's not an understanding it's not a belief is i know for a fact for my fact from my eyes from my experience that there's things going on in our world our reality is not what we think it is you know and uh people can debate all they want about it but this is my experience this is my channel this is my lane of information and you choose to be here if you want to and if you don't like it you choose to get out of my lane of information but meanwhile i got things to say you know, and information to project for those who want to hear what I have to say. So any rude or ignorant or silly comment will only show that you don't know what you're talking about and you choose to instigate or, or like I said, you choose to believe in your information instead of know your information. You need to know what you're talking about, have some type of background or experience in what you're saying before you just say, I don't believe. It's no, it's you don't know. You know, you don't know. So it's important that we sit back and just listen if we don't know something to observe and make choices that we want. You know, I like it. I don't like it. I choose to listen. I choose not to listen. But stupid, rude, ignorant comments, I'll be sure. I'll be sure to use those people um, in the comments in next videos of how to break that kind of bullshit down and what, what people are actually doing. Because the reason why we're not getting ahead um, on this and... We're kind of stuck like a dog chasing his tail with uh, information about we just can't move forward. We just can't move forward as a species. We're breaking down as a species. I say that in all my videos. I speak about us like a species <clears throat> you know, because that's what we are. And we're only recognizing that we're about not to be a species. Uh, and maybe that's why it's so easy to say we are a species about to be lost in what is this between tech, uh, getting into the body, and then being a biotech you know, human being, and then we have people losing and unraveling, you know, from their mind, their psychology, you know, just losing their shit, and that's a demineralization of the body, so you demineralize the brain, and it goes into a negative, and it goes into a decline, a lot of people don't know that, now be, uh, everything I talk about, there's, there's uh, information, there's data to uh, back it all up, but I don't choose to sit here and debate it, because it's not debatable. It is what it is. You either know or you don't know. You choose to jump into that information and find out for yourself. Or you choose to step back, shut the fuck up, and get the fuck out. That's that's just all it is. Um, there's no in-between. And so when we're being demineralized and the food that we're eating is wiping out our, um, our ability to produce vitamins, to make this electrical connection in the body to send out chemical information so that our brain works right, our thoughts work right, our emotions are balanced, <clears throat> serotonin levels, uh, you name it. Uh, but we're losing abilities to process information, to physically be able to move our bodies and be strong again. We, we've lost this. We're seeing people just, everything is just degrading as as a species you know i'm not speaking about you as an individual look at the big picture everything's about the big picture what's happening to us as a species and so i want to make these foods and show you how i make my uh vitamins mineral supplements so that you can help yourself because building up from the inside out is one of the most important things for me personally, I feel we need to do so we can have the mental ability to take that next step because our bodies need to be able to handle the stress and the pressures that are going on along with our emotion need to be balanced so that we can not break the people we love down. You know, the people around us, breaking them, they're breaking them down because of the chaos and the frustrations that uh, build up because of all 
there, there's a list of things. There's a huge list of things that can cause a person um, or people to be to behave this way. But stress is the number one thing, and, and a lot of us, a lot of people in the world are under a lot of stress. And um, so helping to strengthen from within helps to fix the outer world. The inner world fixes the outer world. And so I want to help people get their inner world balance between their emotion, their mind, their psychology, their body. All of, Like I said, all those things are interconnected. And so we're going to start doing things step by step so that we can start building up. And the biggest way to do that is detoxing. And a lot of people think detoxing means you take a pill or you take a drink and boom, fucking magic shit happens. And it doesn't work like that. It's it's identifying. I want to say identification. It's identifying what are the substances in the foods, because food isn't the problem. The substances in the food are the problem. The changes to the genetic code of the food, which came from a seed, is also a problem. Um, what's falling in our atmospheres onto our body, onto our food that once then goes into our body, is a problem. And so, what we're putting on our body when we're taking a bath and we're showering up and we're lathering up, or the creams that we're putting on, or the deodorants that we're wearing, all those things are going into the body, going right into the bloodstream, affecting the body in all kinds of ways that we don't know about. And so, maybe a lot of you know, a lot of people when I talk to them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the species, and they go straight to, well, I this and I that. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the whole. You know, if you can't see the whole, and you can only see you, you can be short-sighted. It's about seeing this big picture. And the reason why it's the big picture is because there's a big enchilada coming. You know, there's a big enchilada coming on this plate. And if you can't handle that big enchilada, you're going to... You can just, you, you, you just can't handle a big enchilada shit. That's all it is. And that's what I'm trying to say. This is a very big picture. And it's about being able to process that information. <laughs> enchilada, I don't know how I came up with that. But I just saw a big enchilada on a plate. It was just like, ah. <laughs> So a couple of people could be shocked about what I say. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to rattle up your world, you know, to get that stagnant water out, that stagnant mentality out so that new information can come in and it's just a new, fresh perspective. That's it. Not trying to make anybody believe anything, belong to anything, you know, join anything. This is just my perspective, where it comes from and why I have it. That's what this video is about. Before I start showing you what I'm doing, uh... So you can apply it if you choose to, you know, if you choose to apply it. So, all right. So I'm going to start talking about my life a little bit, where I come from, um, where I've been. Just a little bit. There's a whole lot, um, you know, for everybody's life, there's a whole lot of story. But I'm just going to give um, just the short little windows that you can put those two little pieces together. And it's like, bam, she got a direction. You know, that's where her direction comes from. So I'm going to go with two very specific things that happened in my life, or maybe three. I'm going to hit up three. Three specific things that happened in my life where, uh, like I said, I collect pieces. I've been collecting pieces. Maybe I haven't said this, but I've been collecting pieces since I was a little kid. Noticing, the, you know, observing, like, what the fuck? You know, I'm sure I didn't know how to say that when I was a little kid, but I'm sure I felt it because I was like, just like, what the fuck? You know, and and just growing up, it started coming out in words. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, just like, what? And now I'm not on that path no more. Now it's, how the fuck are we going to do this? This is how we're going to do it. You know, there are things we got to do to implement so we can make this change. You know, if anybody uh, can stand up and turn shit around and show proof of it, it's myself. You know, I got a lot of videos with a lot of pictures, shows what I was physically like, you know, the things that were uh, damaging uh, my skin, my body, things that I didn't think I was going to um, come out of. Obesity, 211 pounds, you know, I, I've i been there, done that for a lot of things, you know, burns to my face, I can do burns to my face and I, I came out of that too. And so I just, I've come out of a lot of things and every single one of them had to do with nutrients every single one of them repaired with nutrients and removing the most toxic thing substituting the toxic for the nutritious the toxic for the nutritious or i should say the nutrients and it's that 
finding where those toxins are or what's the most toxic so that the body can get rid of the little the little toxin shit that, that it can handle is the big toxins, you know, the big five. I'm sure there's more than five, but we're going to go for just the first big five. We'll take this step at a time. Because if we can remove those from our consumption and put them on our body <clears throat> in the products that we uh, wear and the food that we eat, the body will then be able, the liver will be able to start helping clean this shit out and get it out the body. But it can't do it while it has certain substances in there that block that ability. And so we're just like, body's just like fucking, it's getting huge and it's getting broken and it's and it's wearing out. And we just keep stuffing it with medication instead of recognizing where the root cause is, removing it, and then just letting the body fucking organize while putting a ton of nutrients. Nutrition is the electrical circuit, creates the electrical circuits in the body for connection chemical connections to happen so i'm gonna go to a car to explain what our medical system is like and uh maybe it's an observation a lot of us already have and as observation maybe some of us don't but um <clears throat> we treat the body in the medical system people are trained to ignore what would be like the electrical part of an aspect of a car so a car when you when you take it in to get fixed, it's usually for some mechanical operation. You know, the physical, you're going to take out the radiator. You're going to put a new one in, put a new hose. I don't know. You're going to do something. Uh, you can pick any, any operation for the mechanics, you know, the big pieces, the big blocks of the car, you know, that you're going to fix, the big parts. The tangible parts, that's what I'm trying to say. The tangible parts, the parts that you can grab and pick up and remove and add and put on. And then you have the electrical circuit that runs through your your car. You don't take that electrical circuit to a mechanic that works on the, the mechanics of the car. You take it to an electrical specialist who understands the wiring and the, connect and the connections that go through the physical car, right? So it's two separate things, but they're both part of the car, and we take them to two different type of uh, car doctors. Let's call them like that, car doctors, right, to fix those operations. But in our medical system, we have a body that's physical, you know, it has arms and legs and eyes and has all these physical parts, you know, heart and organs and lungs. <clears throat> then... We have the electrical aspect of the body that's totally fucking shot out the window. It doesn't even exist. You know, it, it's not considered part of the physical operation. So we are entrained to respect these doctors because they busted their ass in school for four, six, eight years, you know. And so they're smarter than we are because they've dedicated that time into that which you know what god bless doctors uh, i've i've had damage to my to my face and eye i needed a doctor who knew what he was doing to fix the mechanics the physical parts of my body all right the physical parts and i'm grateful for it my son broke his arm i needed a doctor who knew how to fix and put back together his arm but we're talking about electrical processes in the body we're giving we're getting medication to fix something that the body is supposed to fix with nutrition. Our body makes electrical connections, chemical reactions from those electrical signals, you know, from nutritional sources. And it's amino acids, vitamins, minerals, I mean, you name it, uh, proteins, enzymes, all these things have a function and operation in the body on an electrical level. You can't just grab a protein and stick it right here and then fix the arm right there. It doesn't work like that. So there's two separate types of work for one physical unit, but they both are integrated together. And in the medical practice, nutrition is a joke and is pushed out. Now, why would that be? Because maybe we know how, to, how we run. Maybe then we know how to actually help ourselves and then medical doctors might wouldn't accept what they're hearing and taking it in as information through the entrainment in the medical system for how to keep people 
unquote healthy, you know, and how to help them in their health. And, and we got, we don't have health. We're not even allowed to cure anybody. And so if you can't even use the word cure, there is a problem. There's a contradiction. So you can't get better, but you can take a medication for the rest of your life, you know, and make profit for a whole lot of people. There's a lot of money in that. And that's just, that's one truth of one lane of information of the truth, but there's many layers, you know, that, uh, that has a whole lot of layers of information of truths and that's just one of them that people are used like cattle pushing them through the sicker they are the more money pharmaceuticals and everybody's making everybody's making so a healthy body don't make no money you know doesn't make any money for that kind of system that we're in and we live in that system and it's about repairing our bodies, taking control of our health, knowing how we work, how we operate, how we function in this field of reality. Because I'm going to take this one step further. You know, I'm always going to be pushing stuff that's not, not common and usual in our language. But what I'm saying is how this biological being, this bioelectric being that we are, you know, this physical body we are, we connect and we project like a tower of frequency you know it beams up out of us it projects out of us and we don't know anything about that in general as far as uh basic standard 101 information you know growing up as a kid you know this shit you, we're supposed to go we're not taught this stuff because then we wouldn't accept the shit that's going into our body to break down and mess up all the different systems of operation within us. And so those are the things I'm going to be talking about while I'm cooking. So as I'm cooking, I'm going to say what this is breaking down, how it's helping, what is uplifting, and how these things interconnect in our body. And I'm going to just do it bit by bit so it's not so much information that's uh, like that big enchilada, you know, that motherfucker can't come in. It's too big. So I'm just going to do it like in little pieces. I'm going to chop it up and then serve it. And then another day we'll chop it up and then we'll serve it. And then... Later on, that whole enchilada is inside you like, bam, I got the whole fucking enchilada. I see the whole big picture. I got it. So I'm going to be putting out information in, in that way. If anybody wants a whole enchilada, I'll be whole, oh, you just type in there, Michelle, give me a whole enchilada. I'll do a whole enchilada video and just like, bam. A lot of people will be like, that's fucking crazy. And then somebody else will be like, I got it. I got it right here. Thank you. You know, because this is what this is about. We're all trans transposing information. We're all, it's almost like um, a relay race. You know, boom, I made it. Boom, now it's your turn. You go further. And then we keep taking this further and further and further and further until our humanity, our the well-being of our humanity, of, of our species gets better because we're all working towards the same thing. Well, the majority of us are really working hard on the same thing. It's making us well as a species. It matters. Because once we're we well, we're going to be able to help our animal species, you know, the, what's in our oceans and our air. All these things are being damaged and ruined and, you know, the life force is being sucked out of everything. Out of everything. And so I don't want to go too much into the field, you know, what we project, what we emanate, how we feel is what we send out into the field. And that field affects us personally and it affects the people around us and the way to, we're not aware of the dynamics that are going on on an electrical level. You know, it's happening electrically. So what's happening in the body is happening outside the body. That shit might sound crazy, but it'll make sense uh, piece by piece of this enchilada. Uh, so I'm going to go back to talking about certain things that happened to me as a kid that made me recognize that reality isn't what we think it is. You know, and not because somebody told me or because I saw it on the Power Rangers or because uh, I watch it on a superhero movie. Is it because I lived these things throughout my life and I went collecting these pieces and putting these fucked up crazy ass pieces like in a pouch. I was like, oh, this shit's gonna matter one day. I need to know what the fuck is going on. So I'm gonna reserve this little bit of information and save it. Cause that's why I, I can say I've been recognizing things since I was five years old. And I say five because that was a first what the fuck moment I had. So it could have had it earlier, but to actually remember, it's uh, about when I was five. <clears throat> Maybe in other videos I'll go into that because that's some deep stuff. 
But for right now, I'm just going to talk about the three things that make me 100% sure those three different incidences at different times that happened put me on this fast track of where I'm at right now. Where it's motherfucking mandatory that we strengthen from within outwardly. We got to change what's going on on the inside, operations on the inside, because it's affecting our world on the outside. And it gets better for us as an individual, and it gets better for the people around us, and which makes it better for our world in general. The big picture's too big for us to say, wow, I can't save the world. I can't do shit about it. I can barely do shit about my own world. So let's do that. Let's bring it down and do some shit about your world, about my world, and how, well, actually, I can't tell you about your world, but I can tell you about my world. And how I went, overcame a lot of things and how I did them, be it mentally, be it emotionally, be it physically. I overcame them and then you can apply that to your life or to somebody else's life or use it however you need to, to, to help uplift. Because like I said, this is a relay race. This is me passing the baton over, somebody grabbing it and saying, go, got it, got it, this is good. All right, shit might sound crazy about what, what I'm going to say, but it's my truth. You know, I say it with conviction, it's my truth. And I don't need anybody to believe what my truth is. I don't need anybody agreeing or disagreeing. I know where I've been. I know what I've felt. And it is true to me, to my experience. And that's what a lot of us don't understand is we feel we need somebody to believe us to to justify to the self and no justification from anybody. Been there, seen that, done it, know what's going on, ready to fucking go. All right, incident number one. So I come from, uh, well, a lot of people come from a tough background, right? So everybody has a different kind of tough background. But, uh, oh gosh, it's hard to talk about, trust me, because uh, people... People are, are quick to judge. People are motherfucking quick to judge. So I have to be very cautious with my words. I have to know what I'm saying and how I'm presenting it. So things are not misunderstood and taken to a different direction. So I'm going to come back to the first one. Because I'm recognizing right now it's kind of hard for me to talk about. But this is the kind of shit that we got to get out so that we can process. And so you might have you might see me go through a process because I'm feeling it right now. I'm feeling like I'm going to go through a process. <laughs> But if you don't see it, you don't believe it. So, you know, we, we got to clear our own shit up. It's the most important thing to do is clear our own shit up. And sometimes if we have to put it on stage, fuck it, then so be it. And uh, this is where, what I'm feeling right now. <clears throat> so it's making it tough for me to talk. I'm not going to say I know what it is. I just know it's not what has been presented to us. It's not in the limits that's been given to us. You know, we've been given a parameter of what reality is. And I've seen other things that show that no... There's something else fucking going on. And the last thing that I saw to put the, I guess you say, the nail in the coffin made me say, got some shit to do. Got some shit to do and shit, shit to work on. And it's fucking vital and important. Like I said, it put me on my fast track to where I'm at right now. Actually, no, it didn't put me on my fast track. <laughs> the whole damage to my face put me on a fast track. Because seeing how I could repair made me recognize, holy shit, there's a fucking solution. There's a solution to our our problems. There is a solution. I guess I had to have the problem first to be able to recognize how to, how to fix it. <clears throat> and that's, we're, we're being aged, you know, we're being degraded, we're being downgraded, I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say we're being downgraded from being an intelligent, caring, loving, strong, you know, strong will, strong heart. A lot of care, you know, we balanced in, in, in our species. We're losing all of that. We're losing all those abilities. Fucking shit's chaotic. People are fucking all over the place. And again, it's a demineralization of the, of the species, of the mind. And all the toxic buildup. I've had experiences... Uh, one of them was, uh, I have three, and I'm not going to say them in order because I, I, I'm having a tough time. I'm recognizing right now I'm having a tough time. So like I said, bear with me. 
one of them was my son was uh he's 28 now and he was eight years old so it was over definitely over 20 years ago i think it was even smaller um he, I was making breakfast for him. You know, one day I was just making breakfast for him, and it was just me, him, and my little sister in the house. And as I was making breakfast, I could hear right here to the right-hand side of my ear, auditorily, don't leave until Jacob finishes his breakfast. And I was just like, what the fuck? What? Like, how, how could I hear that? Where'd that come from? You know? It's even saying my son's name. Just like, what the fuck? Tell you, I live a lot of what the fuck um, experiences, and it's just like, what am I supposed to do with this shit? Now what? And so I didn't know half. I didn't even know a quarter. In fact, I didn't know anything that I know now. Uh, been dragged through the mud to get perspective, to see things from the bottom so I could look up and be like, oh, shit, there's a lot of shit going on. Um, but I come up out of it, and uh, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. <clears throat> so I... Again, I've never shared this stuff uh, publicly, so it, it, give me a second. So I hear this, right, auditorily, and I'm just like, what, what the fuck was that all about? There's nobody in here except for me and my little sister and my little son. And I'm making breakfast, and it's telling me not to leave until he finishes all his food on his plate, right? I'm just like, all right. So... Like everything, you know, we're just like, oh, well, whatever. I got shit to do. I got to go. I'm going to be late. Got to make breakfast. Got to take the kids to school. Da, 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 da. You know that. Hurry up and go. So I'm back to hurry up and go. Making breakfast. Mm. In fact, I didn't take the kids to school that day. I was taking my mom uh, to work. And I was going to leave the kids there while I ran over and took my mom over to the um, driver down the hill. And as I'm walking out... Uh, my sister, it was a early morning. My sister went over. Um, in fact, she wasn't even awake. She was asleep. She was asleep. It was my son. I'm trying to remember everything right now. I'm putting it together. So there was, I hear a male's voice about, don't leave until Jacob finishes his breakfast, right? To finish his, all his food. I'm taking my mom. I got my sister, because I forgot to add that my mom was in the house too. But there's no males in the house, and that voice is not my son's voice, right? And so I'm like, nobody likes to know that they can hear a fucking voice, because that's been projected to us that if you hear a voice, you're fucking crazy, right? And so it's just like, what am I supposed to do with that shit? But at the same time, as my sister's asleep, my son's eating his breakfast, my mom's in the car telling me to hurry up because I got to take her, and I'm looking to see if my son's done eating his breakfast, right? I'm looking. And he has one little piece of, I don't remember if it was bacon or sausage, but it was, it was a, it was a meat. And I could see it was just one piece left. And I was like, ah, he's done. And I was about to shut the door. And I'm like, I got my head just like I'm on my body's all outside, but I'm still looking because that shit was crazy. What I heard when I'm just got to look and check. And I see that last piece and I'm shutting the door. And as my son's eating that last piece, he's running around the house, holding his neck and he's uh, choking. I run in the house, I do the quick Heimlich, boom, gets it out, and I just had to sit down and fucking, fucking reflect on what just happened. How did somebody know that my son was going to choke on that last piece of food that he had on that plate? How did somebody know that? And how did they project in the field that we're in to tell me that and make that choice and that decision to be there to give him the Heimlich? Yeah, but like everything else, you know, we're in a rush. We got to go. Got to pay the bills. Just that overtook for many years. But again, I took that information and I put it in my little pouch since I was five years old, collecting information and said, one day I'm going to need to know what to do with that information. But thank God I was here for my son. Thank God everything happened the way that it did. And my boy's okay. And so that is one piece of a, of a puzzle they let me know that we're not alone here on this planet. And so obviously that's some type of good source, not the negative, saying, hey, we've seen this already happen. For some way, somehow, they would have come in, step into the field, project that information or put out that, that, that information, like a recording or whatever, and then an action happens and then things change. In the, in, I don't want to say the cycle of life, but things change in what 
could have or would have happened if it didn't happen, if there was no intervention. So I didn't take it any deeper back then because I couldn't think as deeply as I can now. And it's not that I can't think, it's my perspective. I had less perspective about life than, than I do now. You know, when I was 20, now I'm 46, I'm about to be 50. My perspective has, has broadened, so I understand more about what's going on and what to do with these pieces that have been collected throughout my life. So the next piece. Sometime in uh, 2008, around there, my I have another little boy, and it's not the same boy, it's another little boy, my other son. And I go to give him a kiss. We're walking out of Walmart. I put him in the car seat and I go to give him a kiss and boom, I get this image in my head and it's, it's foul. And I know it's not how I think. And I'm just like, what the fuck is that? And then what the fuck moment? You know, what the fuck? And, and I'm just like, that's fucking odd. Very fucking bothersome. Where'd that shit come from? I get in the car. My grandma calls me and says, Michelle, you got to come over here. I got to tell you something. And just for information's sake, if my grandma wasn't, didn't live the life that she did, go through the things that she did, I would not know half the shit I know now, but I can reflect back and see the torment that my grandma went through in her mind uh, to understand what the fuck's going on uh, in the world, you know, to understand what's going on in the minds of men and women on a further degree, but still same shit's happening. And I'll, and I'll explain what that means. So my grandma had uh, multiple personalities. And everybody just gave him medication and just, you know, the, the regular spiel of, of what a person with multiple personalities is. It's just they pretend to be these people and these people are figments of their imagination. And well, that day, when my grandma sent me to come over and I'm sitting down and I go to her house and I'm there 30 minutes later... She tells me what I thought, and I'm just like, what the fuck? What do you mean? Are you going to make a statement of something I just saw in my head 30 minutes ago? You know, it was projected to me in, in, my, in one of my thoughts that I know was not mine, but I had no evidence. Like, I, like there's a ton of evidence now. There's a shitload of evidence now of what happens with the body and the mind and, and how radio frequencies and frequencies work and how our minds and hearts work and I'll get into that later <clears throat> but back then I didn't know any of this I didn't know any of this stuff I wasn't even on the internet you know I think the internet just came out not too little after 2008 as far as where everybody's on it and googling and and you I think it was YouTube is what I'm talking about it was internet but there's no uh YouTube so information wasn't running to a pro like it is now and so I had no way of knowing what the fuck was going on. I just know it wasn't fucking right as when I was five years old. I know shit wasn't right in this world. I couldn't fucking figure out where it was at. But I was determined to find out. And so when my grandma made that statement, I was like, okay, I'm here. My grandma's here. And something is in the fucking middle working between my mind and her mind. There's something not fucking right here. Something don't, don't fucking add up. And... Make a very long story short, that was the last time I ever saw my grandma, and I knew it. I knew that was the last time I was ever going to see her. I told myself, you know, in my mind, in my heart, and I was like, damn, it's the last time I'm going to see my grandma. Because this shit's fucking dangerous. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I can't, I can't perceive what's happening. I just know it's not fucking right, and I got to step away from my own grandma. You know, I love her, but I got to step away because there's something imbalanced here and there's something other than me and her in this fucking room. And I couldn't prove it. I couldn't prove it, but there was something not fucking right. And when it comes to my well-being, I've grown to learn that it, it, my well-being and my kids' well-being, it doesn't matter who anybody is, i got to step out, step them outside of my circle for my well-being and my kids' well-being. And that's just this. It's just the way it is. It's not how it was, but it's how I learned to become and some people might think that's wrong and mean of me but shit wasn't right and I had to put back push back away from my grandma like I said for my own well-being and for my kids well-being because it was very very uncomfortable what I was feeling and I could feel I could sense 
that we weren't in there by ourselves. But I couldn't prove nothing. Now here, many years later, 2010, I have an experience that I, I think I talked about with Tony Pinteresco, where I seen some shit in somebody else and somebody else saw that with me. That was it right there. All those pieces that I've been collecting all came together in that one moment. Well, I shouldn't say in that one moment. That one moment I was fucking paralyzed. I couldn't even talk. Couldn't even, it was in fucking shell shock. Never know what that is or how you react until you face with someone that just fucking paralyzes you. Uh, and for those who haven't seen that on that video, I'm going to go over it right now. But uh, we're at a bus stop, middle of the day. Not at a bus stop. We're at a stoplight. There was a bus stop on the side, right in the front. I'm right in the front of the uh, stoplight. And I have somebody here on the side of me. <clears throat> I won't say their name or who they are because I don't know if they want, you know, to be identified. But there's somebody else in the car with me. My kids are in the back and their kids are in the back. <clears throat> And I stop at the stop, and just like we all do, you know, we look around, and then boom, I look to my right, and there's a woman on the bus stop, and she's just looking off, you know, just look, looking off to the side, the hills, whatever. Blonde hair, blue eyes, maybe about 40 years old, and there was something in her face. There was breathing, like heaving, in and out of her face, coming in and out of her face, but it was never outside of where you couldn't see it, but it would just be more predominant as it would pull back in and out and, and it looked like it was breathing you know how almost like a like a in and out <clears throat> and this thing nothing human absolutely nothing human and I don't go into what it is or what it was or what it could be because that takes away from the fact that there's something not human on this earth fucking with everybody fucking with everybody Fucking with people's minds, playing people, manipulation. So all this shit started to fucking make sense to me. What the fuck is going on? And that's why I say reality is not what we think it is. I don't pretend to know what it is. I just know it's not how it's played out to be. You know, how it's made out to be. So being vigilant is very fucking important. Being strong in your mind, your body, your will. Making all this interconnections work. Because we can't. We can't push back against something we got no fucking clue about. Yeah. We can't have the will or the mindset, if it's all fucking broken, to push back against something that ain't fucking right. And I'll just call it that. Not fucking right. You know, I know it's not our species and that's all that fucking matters. It's not about a debate about what it was. It's just a fucking fact. It's not human. And seeing that and, and asking the person next to me to slowly turn around and see if they see what the fuck I'm seeing. Because I need to know I'm not fucking crazy. Because that shit is crazy. And who sees that kind of shit? You know, who sees that kind of shit? And so when the other person turned around and was paralyzed the same way I was, just like, I was don't even look away because you don't even know if it's going to fucking... Jump at the car. That's that's how I was feeling. I was just ready to fucking put my foot on the gas. My foot wasn't paralyzed. That was for sure. My face was paralyzed. I couldn't fucking move my face away. I had to just keep my fucking my eyes on it so that it wouldn't it look like it was going to fucking pounce. Or they could pounce on the car. And that, that was my biggest concern. It would pounce on the car and my foot just going to go. It's going to take off. Put my foot on the gas. Light turned green. I was fucking out of there. Didn't think twice. It was like. And between me and the other person, couldn't talk for the longest time because we're trying to process what we, what we just experienced. And so a lot of people don't share that kind of shit. They don't share that kind of shit because it's just like, oh, you're just fucking crazy. But guess what? I ain't got time for that fucking bullshit. I pulled out all the things within me that could and would have broken me down from other people's ridicule, from other people's perspective. Yeah. I've broken those things down with inside of me. That's another thing I want to show people how to do so we can't be fucking played out here or in here or in here because we're getting played. And that's what all this is about. And that's why what we eat, what goes into our body, the strength that we build up, the emotion that we project out fucking matters. 
So no matter how fucked up we've been, or no matter how fucked up things have been, it's about what we're going to do right now. It's how we're going to build up right now. And that's what fucking matters. So this is Truth and Integrity Warrior. I'm going to keep it short only because my uh, battery is about to go out. But I just want to let everybody know that you matter. I matter. Our species matter. And that we can fix this because it's about pushing back. It's about pushing back. It's not about fighting back. It's about pushing back. But we have to be ready and steady from within. Not be losing our shit from the inside out because that's what we see around us. Everybody's losing their shit. Nobody can tell who's what and where and when. You know, because we do not know how to break contradiction within ourselves. We can't see the contradiction around us. So all these things are interconnected. What we eat, what we're putting on our body is changing how we think and how we feel and how we operate and how our bodies work. And it's breaking us down and we don't even know it. Or if we do know it, we don't know how to stop it. And I do. And I I do for myself and I can show other people how to do it and if other people don't want it like i said it's all right go back to what you do because you do it well this is for people who do care and do want it all right again truth and integrity warrior february 24th 2020 to my next video peace out and be well